If we are going to, you know, set out our stage as being the quality of the graduates and the people coming through the system, and I'm talking second level here, I think we have to set our sights on being world class um, in terms of sort of what are the international benchmarks around those individuals. And when I say that, I think if you're going to set your stage, you have to be better than somebody else. You've got to obviously have proof points around how you can achieve that goal. I think how the curriculum is being delivered is going to be something I think has to be looked at. Obviously, the current system is we have a junior cert, we have a leaving cert, we have a transition year. One of the things I'll be we're working on right now is looking at, you know, how do you re rescope that? I mean, should the uh, junior cert be, you know, should it be a process of continual assessment, or should there be one? Uh, main point there are two main points. I think that has to be looked at and I think it has been mentioned in the past. I think the how effective is transition year? Uh, is there sufficient linkage with industry and is there a more effective way of of using that as the springboard for uh, introducing young people to business, uh, industry and entrepreneurial skills and activities being developed more in that particular phase? Is that the opportunity to do that? But clearly if you talk to the uh, third level uh, college leaders, they will say that they spend the first six to nine months of their time reprogramming the people that are coming out of the system and gearing them into, into to gain a different mindset rather than sort of a rote learning approach, gearing them to more of a logic uh, based and analysis based um, sort of mindset. So I think how we're delivering the curriculum ha is one area that has to be scrutinized. The second piece is what sits below that. I think we need to have a much more holistic view. I, I accept that there's the ICT and school strategy. There's a tranche of money has been released back at the beginning of our latter end of 2009. Another tranche has either been released or is about to be released. Um, I think that has to be done in a, in a wider context, and that is you need to have a vir the virtual learning environment. Uh, I think that has to be uh, scoped out. I think it has to be standard across the system. I think you also have to have access, so I think the broadband access is still key. And I know, again, there's a, a specific project around delivering broadband, but I think it's to 90 schools. I think we have to have that to all of the schools. And then I think you get into what does the ICT and what should that look like. But I do think it should be a standard approach to delivering both the financial uh, investment we're delivering and also, I think, standing back and scoping out what we're actually trying to acquire for that. And I guess my input would be we have to really look long and hard at how we're spending that money and make sure we're investing in something that's future-proofed. We have to create a significant number of new jobs. So my input to government would be I think we should be doubling down on FDI investment. I mean, FDI is probably the one formula that has served Ireland the best. I know there's lots of other ways of creating jobs, but I think FDI has served us the best in terms of its ability to create large numbers of jobs, high-value jobs, and obviously those, the value of those jobs does churn over, over time. And I think even, as you say, in the times we've had over the last 12 or 18 months, we have been able to steadily create additional jobs, particularly for international services. So my input would be I think we should be doubling down on FDI investment. Obviously, I think we need to be casting the net wider, looking at it. an Asia strategy, which was mentioned as firmly as well, which I don't think we've done. We've traditionally looked at the US, and I think we have to look at Ireland serving a global, uh, a global economy, um, predominantly a European economy, but I think we have to look wider than that and certainly look at an Asia strategy or, or even an, you know, an Africa strategy going forward. So I would be saying double down on FDI. That has to be the main, um, the, the main point I would be making. I think in terms of the reskilling piece, I think there's a pivotal role again for agencies like FOSS to be making, contributing here. And I think that there are obviously, uh, I think every industry, FOSS included, has to have gone through a traditional cycle. Going back 15 or 20 years ago, its remit was very much producing more tradespeople. And obviously, I think there's still a demand for that and always will be. But I do think the types of individuals that need to be reskilled and brought into the workforce are individuals who either have the language skills or the technical skills. To, to soak up those FDI-related positions. So I do think we should be looking again at the budgets that we're allocating to entities like FOSS and saying, you know, hang on, would we be better served using that to reskill people, but reskill them with the modern skills, the language skills 
and the, um, as I say, the technical skills to allow them to work in this new workforce we have, we're going to need. I think it came up on the Colin McCarthy report last year that the sort of commercialisation of research or the output we're getting from what we're putting in definitely has to be looked at. Uh, and particularly to me, I think it breaks into you've got applied research, which is the long term style research, and then you have, you know, medium term research. I think if I was again just look at HP, because innovation obviously is very much part of what we do. One of the big differences that Mark Hurd made when he came into HP a couple of years ago as CEO is he looked at the whole or in the investment we were making. And I guess we took a view that said if, you know, if, if R&D can't be commercialised or if we can't see a route to commercialising it, then you have to naturally ask, you know, why are we doing it? Now, some, there, there may be good reason to do it because it may be something that has a very long-term benefit to the company. But clearly, you know, you're going to have, to have some long-term research, but you really need to be looking at our ability to commercialise research. I think the same applies to the question you've asked. We need to be looking at the research we're doing and looking at how, how we, if we can't commercialise it, you know, why are we doing it? I think that's one of the litmus tests we need to be asking. And I think in the type of environment we're in right now, where every euro putting it, put in here should have, should have a return, and if we can't demonstrate that link, then we should be questioning it.